today we're going to talk about warming up and why do we do it and why it's important. So the warm up process, it differs for everyone. You know, everyone finds something that feels best for them and makes them feel like they're ready to play. But whatever that is, one of the most important things is why do we warm up? And I think there's really two sides of this coin. There's first of all, sort of the mm, physical element of it. We want to make sure we're approaching the instrument in a healthy way. So not with too much tension and using our air and our body correctly. And I think from a sort of musical side of it as well, we need to remember what it's like to play a phrase, to play with a beautiful sound, to project our voice through this instrument. And those two are really two sides of the same coin. We can't play musically if we're not in good physical condition. And we can't play often if we don't have a good musical idea, we won't be playing well from a physical and um, air perspective. So these are really, again, two sides of the same coin, all working toward better musicianship. And like I said before, whatever you do, it's probably going to be different what I do and maybe different than what your teachers or your friends do. And that's okay. Everyone finds what, what works for them. So first thing I like to do before I, before I even make a single note is do something that works on air. So often that's just reminding myself of what it's like to take a nice deep breath, you know, with expansion from down here. And there's a couple really good tools you can use to work on that. One of the simplest, it's just a straw of sorts, kind of just getting the wind moving. And I like the straw because it helps to visualize a really fast and narrow airstream that goes through the instrument. Something you can do to work on the inhale is getting a device like this spirometer, it's actually going to show you how much air you're taking in in terms of volume. And it's like an Arcadian, you want this to go higher. So so that got up to about 3000. That was okay. That's not great. Let's see if let's see if I can take a better breath this time thinking deeper, almost like the air is going down your core, down your legs, down your feet into the floor. So that got up to about 4,000. So that was better. And that's reminding us what it's like to take that breath. And next, something that I like to do, just as a reminder, there's this really cool little device called the Aura 7. What it does is it goes on the top of the mouthpiece, like such. It basically turns the clarinet kind of into a flute. And what I mean is that half your air is going to not even go into the instrument. So it makes it really hard to play for more than a few seconds at a time. That's really hard to do. So that's reminding me how much air it uses to get a good sound. And then if I do that for about five minutes or so, and they have a bunch of cool patterns on their website, you know, different tonal patterns that you can use to basically get your air moving while using this device. It's really exhausting to do that. But um, then when you go back and play the instrument, you get a much bigger sound. And after I get the air moving, I like to do stuff that's then going to help develop the embouchure and the fingers. Now, some people like to start off directly with long tones, you know, slow, maybe chromatic scales or five note patterns. And that works really well for some people and it gives you a chance to concentrate on your sound. And that's something I always recommend to young students, these long tones where you're just focusing on how your embouchure is working and how are you moving your air through the instrument. My preference is actually to start off with scales because I find that if I'm just playing one note for a sustained period of time, I can get really tight. And when I'm starting out playing, I want to 
remain loose and free and then maybe afterward I'll go back and do some of those tonal studies. So I usually do a regimen of scales, arpeggios, and thirds in all my major and minor keys and I think that helps us not only develop our technical abilities for when we're playing a solo or an etude or an or orchestral excerpt, but it also comes with the caveat of how difficult of something can I play while still maintaining a good sound. When I have really odd fingerings and intonation concerns to worry about, um, can do I still sound like the sound I want to be producing? So I do my Behrman scales, uh, tonic chords, and thirds. You might use those. You might use the close patterns or the Langinus patterns. You can do whatever you want. But I go slow, and I'll go through all my major and minor keys. So just C major as an example. scales and then tonic chords. See? Okay, that wasn't very good legato, so I'm going to go back and do it again. followed up by the thirds. So I'll do that in all my major and minor keys. And then I usually like to do something with articulation at the end. And this has changed over time. You know, sometimes I do the Langinus exercise that we're all familiar with probably. So on and so forth. Or you might do the um, Behrman staccato and trill exercise. That's another nice one, especially if you've already got your Behrman out. But what I really like is to pick one of the Cal Staccato studies. There's good variety in here of different articulation styles and patterns. And yes, they're all says Staccato studies on the cover, I know. But I really like to focus on just getting a good beginning articulation, focusing on legato, and I find that the speed will come with it. So, you know, I might pick one of these a day. And focus on a quality of tone in the articulation, not just playing short, because short by itself we can get really pecky sometimes. So always listening for a beautiful sound in all of that. And that's really what it comes down to for a warm-up for me. I find that gets me in the right sort of space mentally to play, especially at the beginning of the day, and sets me up to be able to play whatever else, whatever else I need, be it a concerto or a sonata or practicing for a chamber music concert or whatever. The fundamentals are so important and we're really reminding ourselves each day what it's like to play the instrument musically and play effectively. And the music is really the most important part of that. It's so often that people will play their scales but not with any thought of how they're shaping a phrase or how they're using your air. So even in that simple C major scale, always be thinking about the peak of a phrase and how are you using your air to get to that peak of the phrase. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and let me know if you have any questions. You can drop a comment or send me a message, shoot me an email, reach out to me on social media. And that's basically a warm up for you in a nutshell. Find something that gets your air moving, helps you develop your embouchure and your fingers and some articulation. All right, have fun.